comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Cheese is a truly wonderful thing. From a classic like cheddar or Swiss to a more exotic brie or camembert, there's very few cheeses I won't stick my face into. Cheese is a pretty ancient word too, deriving from the Latin caseus, which in turn is thought to maybe come from the Proto-Indo-European quat, meaning to ferment slash become sour, as fermentation plays a role in the cheese making process. While the primary use of the word cheese in the English language is to be used as the name of the dairy-based goodness, it does serve another purpose in the language. Cheese is the go-to word in the world of photography. When we are taking a photo, it is common for someone, whether that be the photographer or someone in the photo, to utter the words, say cheese, and in turn, all those in the photo loudly exclaim the word cheese, more often than not elongating the E sound in the middle. Okay, when you explain like that, it sounds pretty dumb, but it is such a common occurrence in the English speaking world slash the world of photography that no one ever really questions it. However, However, questioning things that no one ever really thinks about is kind of my job. So let's find out how cheese, out of any word in the world, became the go-to word for photographs. In the world of photographs, the facial expression you are most likely to see is a smile. Smiling is seen as the most positive and affectionate expression that we can pull. This is due to societal importance we have placed on smiling, and the actual health benefits it has. Smiling is a great thing, but it can be pretty tricky to smile on demand. The best smiles are the ones that come naturally to us. When we force ourselves to smile, they come off as exactly that. Forced. This is where the word cheese comes into play. Thinking about cheese makes most people incredibly happy. So just saying the word cheese releases the same endorphins as eating actual cheese and results in a beautiful natural smile on the face of whoever says it. Okay, so that isn't true in any way, shape or form, but it makes a ton of sense. The real reason we say cheese in photos has nothing to do with actual cheese, but instead relates to the way in which we say the word cheese. Our mouths change shape depending on the words and letters that we are saying, and the shape our mouth forms when we say the word cheese is that of a very natural smile. It all starts with the CH sound at the start. This sound clenches our teeth together, creating the initial smile shape. And then the EE sound parts our lips just right and allows us to hold it all in place. That's also the reason why we tend to hold the EE sound when waiting for a photo to be taken, to give the photographer ample time to take the picture. Of course, other words have these sounds in them separately too, like China having a CH sound or bees having a double E sound. Yet very few have these two sounds together, which creates that smile. Cheese is also a pretty universally known of word, so asking people to say it won't leave them confused. I suppose in theory, we could also use the words cheers, cheek, or cheetah too, but they aren't as fun as cheese. Also, the ends of those words change our mouth shape more dramatically than the end of the word cheese. The SE at the end kind of holds it all in place a tad more. Cheese really is just the perfect word to hold our mouths in a smile. The earliest evidence we have of this idea of saying cheese to smile for a photo dates back to 1943 and comes from an article written in the Big Spring Herald, a local Texan newspaper. The article reads, Now here's something worth knowing. It's a formula for smiling when you have your picture taken. It comes from former ambassador Joseph E. Davis and is guaranteed to make you look pleasant no matter what you are thinking. Mr. Davis closed the formula while having his own picture taken on the set of his Mission to Moscow. It's simple, just say cheese is an automatic smile. I learned that from a politician, Mr. Davies chuckled. An astute politician, a very great politician, but of course, I cannot tell you who he is. While Davis does not reveal who gave him the tip, it's believed to have been none other than Franklin D. Roosevelt, as Davis worked under FDR. While we know that cheese was the go-to word for photos by the 40s, things were very different just a few decades prior. In fact, by the 1940s, photography had only been around for just over 100 years. The first photograph taken of a camera was shot in either 1826 or 1827 by Frenchman Nicephore Nips. His famous photo, View from the Window at Le Glas, is thought to have taken around 
eight hours to expose. This meant that the camera had to stay still for that entire time, with no disruptions to the subject matter. Thankfully, by 1839, another man, Louis Daguerre, managed to crunch exposure time from eight hours to just 15 minutes. This made landscape photography much easier. However, this still made photographing humans something of a challenge. Making someone sit perfectly still for 15 minutes wasn't the easiest task, and forcing them to smile for that long proved even more difficult. As mentioned, four smiles don't look great, and a four smile for 15 minutes looks even worse. For these long exposure photos, it was easier to sit with a stern face for 15 minutes, and this is why in so many old photos, people look so stern faced. It was just easier to take a photo like that. Plus, dental hygiene was not great in the past. No one really wanted to highlight their awful, rotten teeth. This lack of smiles meant that saying cheese was completely off the table, but saying something while your photo was being taken was still a thing. Supposedly, instead of saying cheese, people would instead say prunes. The word prunes purses your lips together and shapes your mouth into that classic Victorian style seen so commonly in old photos. Whether this meant they had to say prunes for the entire time the photo was being exposed, however, I do not know. Imagine saying prunes for 15 minutes straight. I'd look pretty miserable after that too, I think. Thing. Thankfully, over the years, technology improved dramatically, and exposure times fell radically. People didn't have to sit for ages and look glum in their photos. The speed in which photos could be taken now meant people took more natural looking photos, which led to smiles becoming more popular in photos, and in turn the rise of using the word cheese to create those lovely smiles. At least in the English speaking world anyway. Obviously the word for cheese is different around the world, and these different words for cheese do not make your mouth make that natural smile shape. For example, the French flamage does not create a smile, neither does the Swedish ost or the Azerbaijani pendir. This meant that cheese is not the go to word for photos in other parts of the world. But this doesn't mean that people in these other countries just sit there po faced with horrendous four smiles on their faces. When the camera comes out. Other countries use different words that produce the same effect as cheese in English. For example, in Danish and Norwegian, the word appelsin is used, which means orange, like the fruit. In Dutch, there is the phrase lakens nachit vohugen, which translates into smile at the birdie. Mandarin uses the word chesa, which means eggplant. Hindi has hassel, which means laugh. Indonesian uses bonches, which means green beans. Swedish uses omelette, which unsurprisingly means omelette, and Spanish uses patata, which means potato. Other languages, however, have stuck with their word for cheese, such as the Greek tili and the Slovenian sia. People all across the globe have been able to figure out what word to use which results in the best smile. Let me know down in the comments what word your language uses to produce a smile for photos. But personally, whether I be having my photo taken or not, cheese always brings a smile to my face. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos. $2 a month gets you all that plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.